Joining me now from Southern California Public Radio is Sharon McNary, a reporter at KPCC. Thanks for being with us. So what have we learned now since last night, since the quake happened? Well, it, just a lot of aftershocks. Um, not a huge amount of, of, you know, catastrophe. A lot of upset inside people's houses. But as far as, you know, catastrophic fires, it seems like they're really keeping things in check. I'm standing in front of one of the homes that burned. It's a mobile home. And there's speculation it was a gas line. I don't have an official word on that yet. But um, so far, as bad as it could have been, um, it's really not that bad, Yeah. given the size of the earthquake. Uh, are the officials there concerned about the power lines, the gas lines? Have they turned things off to make sure that as these continued aftershocks happen, the people are still safe? What I've been able to see from driving around town is that things are sporadic. Like I was outside a supermarket in Albertsons that had substantial you know, damage inside. And as they were cleaning up, as I was outside, the workers came running out and said our power just went off. And then I'm just a couple blocks away from that at this old trailer park. And one half of the street, the owner of the trailer park turned off the gas out of fear of leaks or damage. Well, across the street, there was a house that burned down, and some people are concerned that might have been due to a gas leak. So PG&E workers mm -hmm. are walking up and down the rows of mobile homes, making sure there are no leaks. And, and you know, with, with the entire park shut down from gas, they're going to have to turn on every single pilot light when yeah. it comes back on, yeah. which is very time-consuming. I want to ask, your, you and your colleagues are filing stories here in an active earthquake zone. Are you feeling the aftershocks? Oh, absolutely. Um, I was in my car filing some sound and got a very heavy aftershock. I mean, my car was bouncing, uh, you know, around as if I had it, you know, customized to do that as, you know, we like that in L.A., but, but <laughs> this was not on purpose. Right. And so how are the residents that you're speaking with dealing with that? I mean, uh, are, is this something that's affecting them? Is this something that they just roll with? You know, it's so dependent on the individual family. I met one woman who had uh, put up a tent in her front yard and pulled a mattress out of her house to sleep in because it was just so unnerving to be in the house. And I asked her what she needed, and she said, I need this to be over. And then another woman, she doesn't want to leave her house because her little dogs are there. So she's very concerned. And then there's other people who are perfectly calm. One woman who works on the China Lake Naval Base She's the rock of her family, and they were all coming over to her house and hanging out in her garage and her front patio. It's just really individual to the family. And, and what are the local authorities saying now? I mean, last night we saw the USGS experts say that the, the aftershocks could last months, if not longer. Well, the aftershocks will last years. There's no doubt about that. Science has shown that with a big earthquake, you're going to have a lot of aftershocks the next day, about 50% as many the day after, about 30% the day after. I think what people are most concerned about is the surprise, not the geologists, but to the rest of us, that they had a 6.4 on Thursday, followed by a 7.1, an even bigger one uh, the next day. And so they're wondering, could there be one even bigger than a 7.1? Well, the chances of that, the scientists say, is about 3%. And, you know, I go out and buy lottery tickets with a lot <laughs> more extreme odds than that. So, yeah. All right. Sharon McNary, reporter at KPCC, joining us via Skype from Ridgecrest, California. Thanks so much. You bet.